Okay, good morning and welcome to Yeshiva YouTube, The Living Marriage, Chapter 3, titled A Deeper Look at Intimacy and Shalom. Again, this is a book that talks about intimacy from a Jewish perspective, from a from Orthodox Jewish perspective. Uh, we're just getting into the book, so we're discussing more of uh, the ideas behind not the practical uh, laws or the practical uh, ways of doing your best job in the bedroom. Um, <clears throat> Here he talks about the last chapter, talk about Shalom. Shalom Abayas, you know, he was saying Shalom Abayas is very important um, in a general sense without relating it to intimacy per se. Here he relates it to, intima to intimacy. He said, he brings a Gemara um, in Shabbos, Kufman Bay 152, that talking about old people, and he said, um, one of the Rabbanim said he couldn't go to a certain place, and he said he has problems with all parts of his body, it's hard for him to walk. And one of the things he says is Mesim Shalom Babayas Bato. A thing that makes Shalom Bias in me, which was his organ, um, his ability to be together with his wife is Bato. Rashi there, Rav Nisim Go, not Rashi, he says, Zu Taiva, Mesim Shalom Bayas Bato, Zu Taiva Shimala Shalom Ben Ishla Ishta. Taiva, desire for sexual relations. Um, which brings shalom between man and his wife. It brings peace between man and his wife. He said he lost that as an older man. Um, so he explains from this Gemara that one of the, the biggest things that helps shalom bias is the ability to have intimacy, and specifically the taiva, the desire to have intimacy. Because maybe it's possible to have some sort of intimacy, but without the desire, I don't know about Viagra, we'll not talk about Viagra now. I'm not familiar with that. Uh, for older people. Anyway, um, so he mentions and he brings another Chazal. Darash Rabbi Akiva, the Gemara. So the Ish Ve'ish Zachu Shechina B'neim Lo Zachu Ish Akalta. If a man and a woman are Zocha. What the word Zocha means, it's hard to understand. I would say it means like a credit. I mean, Hashem gives it to you. But Zachu, most people translate merit. If they merit, meaning they work on their Shalom bias, then they'll have Shechina. They'll have the presence of God among them. Lozahu, if they don't marry, they'll be consumed with fire, meaning they'll have bad shalom bias, which will ultimately have a terrible marriage or lead to divorce. It's up to you. <clears throat> That's what he says. It's really up to you, and you have control over that, the way the author understands that if you're successful in the bedroom, right? Because Rashi says, Zahu, what does it mean? If they're not committing adultery, you know, it's interesting that as he brings this Rashi, if they're not committing adultery, then they have Shrina Beinayim. Now, it's very interesting that he brings this Rashi because there's, there's a lot of difference between having a good time or, you know, Shalom bias in the bedroom and not committing adultery. A lot of people that don't commit adultery. Um, that maybe, you know, they need a lot of help in the bedroom. So um, it's hard to understand why he would bring that over here because he's, Shalom Bayi is really, he's saying that people have a great relationship in the bedroom. So that's going to facilitate Shalom bias to the highest degree. He brings an interesting story over here. I'll, I'll read the story. Open debate. When I was a young Avrik, the author says this, my teacher of Mordechai Gifters at Sal, who was a big rabbi from Tells in Cleveland, and informed me that there was a young, enthusiastic priest who was publicly preaching the foundation of Christianity, that marital relationships are the height of impurity, and anyone who wants to become holy must turn away from them at all costs. He also requested that Jews choose a rabbi who would represent them and face him in a public debate. Rav Gifter explained that he was currently searching for a fitting representative who could explain why marital relations are, in fact, an expression of the Holy of Holies. Would I be interested in taking the job? I answered, absolutely not. He asked me why I was so adamant about not going. If it was because I already knew the truth and didn't have time to waste arguing with some young priest, you could accept that. But if it was because I wasn't certain that I could win, or maybe because I wasn't even sure that he was totally wrong, then I have a big problem. In the end, Ralph Gifter admitted that there was, in fact, no priest. He made up the story. But he wanted to impress upon me the importance of having clarity in this fundamental topic. This is the terrifying darkness of our exile, which leads one to perceive that holiness is found only in the study hall, and is not at all relevant to one's bedroom. We have been in the abysmal exile of Edom for 2,000 years 
surrounded by Christian influence that has unfortunately deeply invaded the basic worldview of many fine, innocent, Torah-observant victims who simply don't know better. And then he says, let there be light, a new look and intimacy. We'll quote soon some of these chazals that he brings, and more specifically he brings from later Achronim, especially the Maharal, the way he understands all these chazals and what the Maharal and others are explaining, uh, I'm not going to quote all the different chazals I'll bring it over here, but he says that as opposed to Christianity, Judaism believes that it's very holy to be together with your wife. It's a very holy thing. Uh, he says, he quotes from the Maharal, he says there's two purposes um, in being together. One is to have children. And the second Thing, which is maybe a higher thing, is he says, <sighs> he says that the the idea of being together with your wife is that it's shlemus, right? He says, Perish the ish be isha, shakal echad mehem chelek adam, each one is a specific type of person, shlem be yachad. Like he mentioned in the previous chapters, each one, we're a half, right? A man is a half, right? He has a masculine side, not a feminine side. A woman has a feminine side, not a masculine side. When he is complete, right? Hashem likes to rest his presence on things that are complete. At the time, specifically at the time when they're in the yachad, when they're in the bedroom and they're having intercourse. So then Hashem, the Shekhinah, is Shora. And that's his final proof. This is, um, he said, he concludes the chapter as follows. We learned above that true Shalom isn't about fight prevention. True, sh true Shalom is the harmony which is found in a couple's ability to unify as a complete Adam. Now we know that a couple's true completion also includes the divine presence which wishes to dwell with them. To the extent that a couple achieves shalom, they will become a chariot for the Shekhinah, which will bring success and happiness into every aspect of their lives. As he's saying over here, the purpose of the bedroom is to facilitate shalom bias in its fullest extent. And shalom bias, it, where Shekhinah, where Hashem enters your home, seemingly, is when there's completion. And the highest form of the shalom bias, the highest form of the completion, is when they're together. Because when they're together, they're a whole person, right? When they're She's cooking, and he's learning, or he's watching TV. So they're not a complete person. When they go to the bedroom and they're together, so then they're a complete person. And now, the, the author basically assumes that that's the opposite of Christianity. This is the problem I have with this chapter, is that, and maybe with the whole book, but we're not looking at the whole book right now, is that he says Christianity is terrible. Christianity is wrong. Now, what does Christianity say? Christianity says that being together, having sex, is a terrible thing. Um, it's very it makes you impure now if you look at religious christians out there now you know yes priests are celibate uh, the pope is celibate cardinals are celibate i don't know exactly who is celibate generally the rabbis or the priests are the ones that are celibate nuns are celibate um the rest of the christian population i mean christianity is the biggest religion in the world you know most of them have feet are together a lot of times before marriage, even religious Christians get married. So to say it's impure, even Christianity believes, yes, it's impure, but only people who are willing to be on that high level, right, to lead other people, they should be celibate. But it's something that's a basic human need. So you can't encourage, I don't know exactly Christianity, how they deal with the fact that everyone else engages in sexual activity and gets married. Apparently it's okay. If you want to be really pure, you want to dedicate your life to God, to be a nun, be a priest, be the Pope, and be celibate. Otherwise, it's okay, because it's an urge. Yes, it's lust. That's what they call it, lust. It's one of the seven terrible uh, sins. But uh, it's something which is necessary. We can't live without it. We need, to, we need to propagate. You have to have children. And it's a basic, I think even Christianity agrees it's a basic urge and need. I was reading about the Pope, the lifestyle of the Pope. Uh, you think the Pope, he's celibate, so... Just like he distances himself from women, he distances himself from all physical enjoyments. But that's not true, because the Pope actually, customarily, he gets a Patek Philippe watch, which is one of the most expensive watches in the world. It's customary for each Pope to get one of these watches. Um, 
I read about the lifestyle of the Pope. You know, he orders pizza very frequently. You know, he lives in Italy, so they have good pizza over there, at the home. You know that where pizza was 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 first introduced in Naples, Neapolitan pizza is the original pizza. So, uh, you know, it, he enjoys food. He has no problem enjoying food. Lust is specifically in the bed with women. That is something which is considered impure. I think it goes back to the original sin of Adam Arishon, you know, that he sinned uh, in that respect. Um, exactly what the sin was. The Ethan Eitz Adas, but the snake had relations with the woman. It. So it's not exactly clear. Some Something was wrong with the original sin. I don't know Christianity. I have not read the doctrine of Christianity. But the author assumes Judaism has it right. Judaism preaches the opposite of Christianity. Christianity says it's impure, right? And if you're going to be a holy person, you want to be the priest, a pope, you got to refrain from intimacy. Uh, Judaism embraces intimacy. Why does Judaism embrace, no Judaism embrace intimacy? Now, if you, if you would ask me, put it logically, what's the opposite of the impurity of the Christianity? It's lust, right? The opposite should be that Judaism praises intimacy because it's good to enjoy it, right? You would think Christianity says it's impure, it's lustful. Judaism says, no, enjoyment is good. That's not what the author says. The author says it's not good. Uh, it's The reason we're together with our wives is not uh, is not the, just appropriate, not the appropriate to have, to have more children. That's not the only reason, but it's the real reason is to be an Adam Shalim, like he said in earlier chapters, to unify with your wife, to unify with your female side, to become a complete person. And like the morale says, when I'm complete, then the Shekhinah is Shorah, and I'm closer to God. The whole purpose of this is being closer to God, which is a spiritual thing. God, whatever God is, it's a spiritual idea that God really doesn't have physicality according to most Jewish doctrines. So <clears throat> basically you're attaching yourself to a spiritual thing. How do I attach myself to a spiritual thing? I act in a physical way with my wife. When we're together, it brings from a lot of chazals over here that the Kruvim, the Beis Hamikdash, were hugging each other, representative of a man and a woman, stuck together, you know, in the position of intimacy, the ultimate expression of intimacy. So that is the that's the way of bringing you closer to God because of shlemos. Now, according to that, if that's true, right? So then. Let's just take this to a practical perspective over here. Now I enter the bedroom. I get married. I enter the bedroom. I did everything the right way. I never had premarital, you know, intercourse or touched a girl even premaritally. So, <clears throat> or even spoke to her in some or other circles. So, when I get into the bedroom, right, and I read this author is what he's telling me over here. I want to come closer to God. I want the Shekhinah. To be shown in my house. I want to have shalom bias. I want to have a great marriage with Hashem and bring the divine presence into my house. What should I do? You go into the bedroom. Okay, let's say your wife is pregnant, right? She can't have more kids. Or your wife is infertile. She can't have you can't, there's no fertility problem. Or your wife is past menopause and you can't have a kid. No. Torah teaches it's important to be together. Wife, that's true as expression of shlemus and to get shrina rests upon you and your shlemus, your completion, man and woman together, a full individual. Is by being together. So I go into the bedroom. How how long am I together with my wife? Well, I don't know. Just maybe do it quickly. I don't know. How often do I do it? There's no there's no laws about this. You know, obviously not going to do it every every minute of it every day. Obviously the morale is still man. That if you do it once in a while, whatever normal people do. So it doesn't say how long you should do it. And and, and seemingly. What the author is leaving out over here, what I think the author is trying to say, is that, and he does bring this actually, he brings it from the, the stipler. He said, I answered, he said, that the stipler explained to me that certainly no one will refrain if they do not know this Raja. However, this is what the stipler said. They may believe that they are performing an animalistic act, and we must teach them the fact they are doing an act of Kruvim. He's explaining why the Kruvim, when Israel went into Ali al-Regal, they saw the Kruvim, they, they opened up, apparently, the Kodesh HaKadosh. On top of the Aron were the Kruvim, these two angelic faces. And they were hugging each other, and sort of they were stuck together, like the man inside a woman. So, <clears throat> they saw that, and he asked, the author asked the disciples, should I teach people about this? You know, I mean, it's a Rashi, it's a Gemara. Uh, he says, yes, it's important to teach them, because don't think it's the animalistic act. Right? Animals do it just out of lust or desire. 
for physicality. You have to act like the Kruvim, where it's Kedusha. And again, Kedusha means attaching yourself to God. And God is a spiritual thing. This is the problem I have. That he, he's basically saying <clears throat> is that physicality is the, it's not the idea. Being together is not because you want to enjoy the act. Enjoy the act. Uh, that's what I would assume the opposite of Christianity. Christianity says enjoying lust is bad. Judaism says lust is good. And it's, it's good to enjoy yourself in this world. And if that's true, what I'm what I'm saying, or the opposite of Christianity, and you enjoy yourself, then we have a whole you know arena to talk about the bedroom and talk about there's so many different ways to make it more enjoyable. How you should make it more enjoyable for the woman and more enjoyable for the man. You know, you can look in the, in you know the Goyish world, or they have videos. Um, you know. This is it's a, it's, a, it's a true reality. There's a lot of you know porn videos out there, where you know there are different ways of people enjoying this thing, um, and there's so much to learn about enjoying it, how you enjoy it, what's the proper way to enjoy it. And I always say kedusha, difference in tuma and kedusha. I mentioned this in the Mishnah share today. Is that kedusha means to enjoy the world, like the Masil says Sharm says kedusha is to enjoy the world to. However, it has to be done in the right time, in the right way, because a lot of times if, it's, if we try to enjoy the world without boundaries, without limits, we just run rampant. So a lot of times we're not able to enjoy the world. We ruin it. We ruin it. I hear so many stories. I don't hear so many stories. I heard once in mentioning someone said um, about their life in their 20s, and a non, not even not a Jewish person, you know, casual sex is, you know, a very common thing in the non-Jewish world. Um, in their 20s, people don't get married in their 30s. In the firm world, people are getting married in their 20s, but most of their 20s are exploring. And you know, in college is very rampant, and even you know when they, they're working in young jobs or whatever in their 20s, you know, they'll date and maybe have casual sex and things like that. So they're saying they feel like they, they wasted it, like they didn't even enjoy it. They didn't even enjoy it because in order to enjoy the bedroom, you have to work on it. And you have to know what's what each person, you have to communication, to know what each person likes. And you have to do it in the right way and control yourself. You have to, to control yourself to enjoy it. Everyone thinks, oh, it's so easy to enjoy uh, being to, being together, being in the bedroom. It's not so easy to, to enjoy. You have to, there's, there's a lot of work and there's a lot of wisdom in terms of enjoying it. But that's not what the author says. The author says that the idea is just to be together, to have the shrina, which is closest to God, a spiritual thing, not a physical thing, God. Presumably, so, and that's by be just being stuck or hugged or intimate with your wife. So how long does that last for? Who cares? It there's no specifications. Just be together for I don't know one second, two seconds, or whatever long it takes. There's no length. There's no chachma. There's no wisdom in how to enjoy it the most. It's just the idea of being together, and that makes shalom bias. So I think at the end of the day, um, what the author has done is really just taken. The idea of Christianity and just made it a little fancier, um, fancier wording over here, and like he quotes over here that the idea is not to enjoy the physicality. You're not supposed to enjoy the physicality. You're supposed to realize the importance of it is because it connects you to God. It connects you to God because now you're a complete person when you're together with your wife. So you're a complete person. So. In my mind, that's just a little fancier way of saying it, that it's a spiritual act. Christianity says, be celibate, because we can't get spirituality from it. This author says, don't be celibate, be together with your wife, because you're getting closer to your spiritual side. So that's already a problem, because when we're talking about being close to our spiritual side, then we, we our minds go back to the base medrash and think about the base medrash and think about... You know, spirituality, physicality is the opposite of spirituality. And the nature of it is, is that when you're in the bedroom or when you're doing something physical, is that you're going to want to enjoy it. You're going to enjoy it more. And the author is basically saying, wait a second. Yes, be together. But don't enjoy the physicality. And he says this a couple times in this chapter. Don't enjoy the physicality. The physicality don't be like animals, he says. Don't enjoy the physicality. It's the whole purpose, the higher purpose, the reason it's holy is because it binds you together and makes you a complete person. If that's the whole idea, it's not the opposite of Christianity. It's, in my mind, it's just a fancier way of saying uh, there's a reason for it, a spiritual reason for it. Christianity says, don't do it. It's spiritually bad. 
And Judaism says, no, it's spiritually good for a spiritual reason, not for the real reason, which is a physical reason, which is the enjoyment, which is what I really believe. Um, and I believe that, that that's really what God wants. God wants us to enjoy this world. And Mizzou Sharm says it many times. He wants us to enjoy this world. He gives us, you have to answer in judgment if you didn't taste the fruit, any fruit that <clears throat> you wanted to taste and you held back because you considered it a taiva, you considered it something which is just a base desire, like an animal. Um, no, the answer is, is that Hashem wants you to enjoy the world. Yes, like Epicurean said, a Greek philosopher, you have to have manners, you have to have restraints, you have to control yourself when you're enjoying the physical world. Not because it's a bad thing, because you want to enjoy it the most, to enjoy it in the best possible fashion. You have to put restraints on upon yourself. You have to control yourself. You have to know the right time, the right way to do it, which is a whole science. You know, you can write chapters and chapters upon that. I don't know which direction the author is going to take this going forward, but from this chapter itself, it seems to me problematic how the author is saying that the whole idea of being together is just a spiritual idea and it's not a physical idea. And to neglect the physical aspect and say enjoying the physical aspect is not okay. And the nature of it is when you say the physical aspect is not okay and it's just you have in mind, and I've heard this from different uh, rabbeim that they said that when you're together with your wife, you have to, it's very important to have kavana, that you want to produce a tzaddik as a child. Like maybe that's, it's very important that the, the machshav or the thought that you have when you're together with your wife is to produce a child who's a tzaddik, who's a tzaddik. Again, this is making uh, into a spiritual act. And when you, when, you know, very often it's very hard for people when they're involved in something spiritually to appreciate the physicality. It's usually spiritually, we assume is not in physicality. And the more we're engaged in spirituality, we want to reject the physicality and say physicality is a bad thing. I think that's what Alfred is still saying. If physicality is a bad thing, you do it a different. He's just saying it's good to be together for a spiritual reason. Christianity says it's, good, it's bad to be together for a spiritual reason because it's physicality. The other is saying physicality is a bad thing, but it's a good thing to be together for spiritual purposes. We've been an Ishal and complete person. I find that problematic. And the general, uh, the general uh, uh, repercussions for assuming that is that people in the bedroom, if you just tell them that it's a spiritual idea, that it's good for a spiritual idea, they're going to refrain from the physicality and they're not going to enjoy it in the proper way and they're going to put extra restrictions on themselves. And we'll talk more about that going forward. I hope you enjoyed it. today's lecture. See you in the next one.